Dr. Cheryl, and welcome to Wake Up with Dr. Cheryl. The theme of our show is raising the consciousness and awareness in the relationship with wealth and applying unconditional love. Always remember that your present situation is not your final destination. The best is yet to come by Zig Ziglar. I'd like to... Our special guest this evening is China Gelland. I invited China because I thought her purpose would be a wonderful example of unconditional love in action and a wake-up call to raising the awareness around prejudice and creating healthier and wealthier relationships with different cultures. China Galland, M.A., is a prize-winning author of several nonfiction works, including Love Cemetery, Unbearing the Secret History of Slaves, Longing for Darkness, Terra and the Black Madonna. She's completing the documentary film Resurrecting Love, an East Texan African American community struggle to reclaim the Love Cemetery, the historic burial ground they own. China's The Bond Between Women, A Journey to Fierce Compassion was chosen as one of the best five books on spirituality by the annual Books for a Better Life Award. China has been a professor in residence at the Center of the Arts, Religion, and Education at the Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley, California, the largest consortium of Christian schools of theology in the U.S., as well as the research associate and adjunct f faculty. Art, Darkness, and the Womb of God, the graduate level intensive, grew out of her pioneering work on the divine feminine cross-culturally. She has been affiliated with the Graduate Theological Union for over 20 years. Her Images of Divinity Research Project at GTU's Center for Women and Religion. A riveting storyteller and public speaker, China has lectured at Harvard University, Columbia, Cornell, Bowling Green University, and Prescott College, among others. This is the second segment of a two-part discussion with China. Because I finally have learned to acknowledge my discomfort about mm -hmm. racism mm -hmm. and be able to talk about it mm -hmm. to whatever degree I can yeah. uh, in, a, in a way that's helpful. But part of what's exciting to me about making this documentary is... Yes, please, let's talk about your documentary. The cemetery is everybody has to die. We're all going to die. We're all going there. Yep. So anyone, no matter what your background, no matter what color of skin, can understand and appreciate wanting to honor your ancestors. Mm -hmm. That cuts across all lines and age groups. We had one little Latino boy back in there with us who was a, a volunteer from the Boy Scouts. He'd never met his grandfather, but every year his family went to Mexico to clean their burial ground, and he always mm -hmm. talked to his grandfather. Mm -hmm. He would sit by his grave. Well, let's face it, our spirit never dies, but yeah. our body does. So um, he wanted to be out there helping and giving up his Saturday morning as a young teenage boy because he couldn't imagine what it was like not to be able to go sit by your relative's right, grave. Right. It was very sweet. And there are many people who, we had one stalwart volunteer who was a Vietnam vet. And at first, I began to think he was a little more progressive than some people in the area. And then I discovered, no, he said he, he thought that it was a matter of morality that you be able to honor your dead and visit your dead. You know, and he said that from a veteran's point of view. And of course, I'm sure there are veterans buried in there too, mm -hmm. as yeah. there are in any of these cemeteries. Mm -hmm. So it's a subject, it's a location that anyone can enter into. And in 2007, when the book first came out, there was a new landowner, there were two large surrounding landowners. And we got locked out again, the community got locked out again over a quibble about liability insurance, supposedly. So without going into that, after four years, the state of Texas got involved, which was fantastic. They called public hearings, 
when the book came out and they heard about these people still being locked out, because that's against the law. Yeah. They called statewide hearings. So many African American families showed up, especially, not only, but primarily. Mm -hmm. They ended up having four more public hearings around the state. And the law got changed. Good. And Rick Perry signed Good. a new law creating penalties right. and fines for yeah. people who won't so allow it, others to cross. Good, then it will no longer happen that people get locked out. Oh no, it'll happen again because think, because a uh, law is only as good as, as its, its enforcement. Withheld. Yeah, as exactly. its enforcement. Yeah. And we did get locked out again, oh. but we got in in 2011. And the students at Wiley College, which was fan which is fantastic. Wiley College has a special place, and a special place in my heart. They, I'd learned about them in the 80s when I first met Kizzy Mae Hicks mm. and started hearing stories that I later discovered were absolutely true. I, I looked up her great-grandfather in the, in the census records, and yes, he did own five or 600 acres of land. Um, Wiley, it turns out, I discovered Wiley College in Marshall, Texas, which was featured in the movie The Great Debaters with Denzel mm -hmm. Washington. Mm -hmm. Denzel directed mm -hmm. and starred. Mm -hmm. Oprah helped produce. Nate Parker, who's our executive producer. Senate Journey Smollett and Forrest Whitaker, a fantastic group who took a true story from Wiley's 1935 debate team. That it, was an excellent movie, by the way. It was a superb yes. film. It's, so it's all based on a true episode of yeah. the powerful debate team that included James Farmer, Jr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who was one of the major civil rights leaders along with King. Uh, one of the big four, it's called sometimes, or the big six. Mm -hmm. He founded CORE. In any case, to go back to your inquiry, the students at Wiley got involved, the trustees got involved. Trustees discovered that three, they had relatives, three of their rel trustees had family buried in Love Cemetery. <laughs> and students volunteered. That's and how then gets home. <laughs> then, because the students from Wiley were coming and helping us, the Nate Parker scholars and students from all different parts of the campus got involved. Uh, I got uh, invited by one of the English teachers who wrote, who'd read the book and said, particularly the parts, the sections on the history of the area, and asked me to help her develop curriculum because she said, nobody knows how to talk about slavery. Mm -hmm. I'm African American, I'm teaching at a historically black college, I've got many, not only, but many African American students, and very few people really know the history, know, know how to talk about it, understand it. Yeah. So it's a project we began to lay the groundwork for. It's something we've continued to meet about and look forward to developing as soon as the film is launched. But first we have to complete the film. But it got the school involved and they got me involved. And then students from predominantly white East Texas Baptist University got involved. They wanted to come help their compatriots at Wiley. And the first Saturday we were <laughs> out there in September of 2012, 65 of us, primarily students, but some faculty, community volunteers, we were locked out. Yeah. We got locked out again. So maybe it was an accident, maybe somebody locked uh, the Timber Corporation's mm -hmm. locked to mm -hmm. the wrong place on the gate. Maybe it was deliberate. You'll never know. But that's very much what racism is like. And that's been one of the gifts of this, the frustrations and the gifts, is to begin to understand that race is a, and racism is a daily phenomenon in our culture, if you're a person of color. That so many things that I would never think twice about or never run into crop up or are made difficult. Not always. And it's not that people are bad. It's There's a tremendous learning we need to do. But even deeper, psychologically, I think what, what we've done in this country, we've, some people politically have held up those who founded this country almost like you do as a child with your parents. They can do no wrong. They don't have feet of clay. They're gods. Mm -hmm. And uh, their word is law, you know. But, you know, you, one matures. One goes through becoming a teenager and striking out on your own and discovering who you are and having to see where there are faults, mm -hmm. where there are limits, right, right. understand that everyone is human, which you don't when you're a child. No. So. <laughs> well into <that> adulthood. 
Yes, and so I think there's a way in which we, many of us in this country have not realized that because by denying, I mean, think of it, at the UN Conference on Racism in South Africa, Colin Powell was our representative. And we still, in the United States, refuse to apologize for slavery. There's a, a way in which, and in Texas, and I don't, know, I don't know about other states, but there was a great controversy within the last few years, like within the last four or five years. They were going to take the word slavery out of textbooks and call it the Atlantic Triangular Trade. And to even talk about slavery, some people feel like you're being critical, it's too dark a history. Well, it's going to continue to come up until we acknowledge and own that this is our history. This isn't just their history, this is American history. This is our history. Mm. So if someone harms you, how do you know that, that they you know, are worthy of being forgiven or wouldn't harm you again? They have to come and, you know, in South Africa, the great process that was instituted, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, people who did not, who wanted amnesty for the crimes that they committed against the African population had to go before the mothers. They had to go before yeah. other people in public. This was all done in public. It was transparent. Mm -hmm and bring up the pain. And yeah. the mothers got to say whether or not they thought that person had changed. Oh, well, yeah. Well, but an extraordinary process, and in many ways- It's gonna take a lot to get that done here. It would take a lot, but some people are already talking about that. Some, mm -hmm. we've already tried that. There's been a Truth yeah, and Reconciliation yeah. Commission in Greensboro, okay. uh, North Carolina. Yeah, Good. So, is that one of the answers? I don't think there's any one answer. But I think love is part of the answer, mm -hmm. because by having to go back into the cemetery, now there's another university in the Dallas area that wants to get involved, a larger. That's great. Yeah. Yes. That's the more, more recognition and the more exposure to this will help educate the masses. Well, because it's education that's the key. Yes. Yes. And part of what we've discovered about the cemetery is that Cemeteries are sacred grounds. Yeah. And it's also a place where we've had students come after the cleanup, recite poetry, sing, rehearse. Uh, one young woman who was a, is one of Wiley's current, uh, was Wiley's debater in 2012. Mm -hmm. She had taken on, uh, as did some of the other students in their debate uh, college, on their debate team had taken on, uh, taken up the cause of Love Cemetery and were debating. I gave them a resolution that the coach uh, Medina helped shape, which is all cemeteries in the United States that have the remains of people enslaved in them should be given national historic mm -hmm. status. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because these are scattered around the country. Oh, sure. And in Poland and Germany, they're using the res restoration of cemeteries as a strategy for healing and reconciliation mm, totally. and restoring the history. Right. Because then right. you begin to learn it. Yeah, absolutely. So I would love to talk about your movie and your documentary. That's really, imp you know, we're, we're getting down on time and I want to be able to. Well, this is all in the documentary. Is, oh, it is. Great. Absolutely. Great. great. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Yes. I mean, and. So these, where are you right now with the documentary? Well, we've actually shot almost all the footage that we need. I think oh, okay. we have shot it. We're in post, what's called post-production. Mm -hmm. Over the years, we've, I've raised, I, th I think, over $300,000 towards the budget. What I'm shooting for, what we're shooting for, is an hour-long show on national television. But an hour-long show on national television, no matter how fantastic the quality, how great it is as mm -hmm. a documentary, isn't gonna heal racism. However, the idea is to bring up this unusual situation that's brought so many people together because mm -hmm. we're approaching the conflict over this cemetery and the continued, will we be able to get in? Are we gonna be locked out again? Mm -hmm. By just building a larger community, like surrounding mm -hmm. the conflict mm -hmm. with a larger, more diverse community yeah. and exploring the history and beginning to use it as an educational tool. So, and, and a performance space. Mm -hmm 
to bring in people. So the, the, one of the women who came with me um, last year was an Oakland Poetry Slam champion, who's also one of our associate producers. She'd written a poem about Love Cemetery, mm -hmm. The Road to Love, because of what she knew about it. So mm -hmm. she came and recited it for everyone nice. there. Her family was enslaved in Texas starting wow. in the 1820s. Yeah. So it was a powerful yeah. experience yeah. for her, for us, yeah. for everyone, and some of the other students. Healing, healing, forgiveness. Absolutely. Well, people have to ask for that, and I don't, I don't know where people are yet. Yes, it's a path. It begins, first we have to know what happened. We don't even know in many cases. We haven't allowed ourselves, those of us who, are, who may identify as white or from other cultures, may not know that much about African American history because so much has been buried and rejected. Right. But it is a powerful, astonishing, completely inspiring history. That made, that's what made me think, oh, we didn't really have a democracy until King wow. and Farmer wow. and uh, Diane Nash and all the Rosa Parks, all the mm -hmm. people who were so astonishingly courageous and deeply spiritual, mm -hmm. relying on both the Constitution and our laws and our government and their belief in a, in a higher power, which they chose to call God, um, to get them through. And it did. And it is an absolutely astonishing. Where do you see Selma? It's such an mm -hmm. exciting, mm -hmm. powerful movie. Mm -hmm. The respect that you come away with, understanding the odds that people have had to fight That's against. That's out right now, isn't it? Or no, it'll be out in January. Though. Oh, in January. Okay, good. It, because I'll be I'll be on it as soon as. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a magnificent. I've seen bits and pieces, but it's not magnificent. Yeah. It right. really is. So we have a chance with this film, and it needs to be finished now. This uh, 2015 is the anniversary of the Voting Rights Act. Oh wow. Here, okay. yeah. Here we How have timely. the voting this rights. Is wonderful. It, the timing couldn't be better. It has been. I feel like I've been in Dante's purgatory in the <laughs> lower rungs, mm. being sort of tapped on the shoulder to work on this story. I mean, I thought I was making a couple of phone calls a few years ago for a neighborhood friend, Mrs. Britton. Right, right. I was actually writing a different book, which I finished, but this, I couldn't turn my back no. on what I knew. And plus, my family's from this community. Right, and it turns out some of the people buried in that cemetery used to work for my family's nursery business. So I was tangled up in yeah, this story a deep connection. before I was even born. I didn't, before I knew anything about it. So, and I, one of the reasons I trust it is that I never thought of this. It was not my idea. You know, it's like, okay, guess what, girlfriend? Your turn. <laughs> um, so it's been this enormous gift, but it, what's important about it is being able to share it and being able to bring people into the subject of race without finger pointing, yeah, blame. Absolutely. No, who is you going to? You come into it with love and, and you know, openness. And you come also, into it with your humanity. Yeah. Because you too have lost someone or right. you will lose somebody and death is a reality every human being faces. So th this is one of the few stories where there's a universal um, phenomena mm -hmm. at the heart and mm -hmm. center of it, mm -hmm. which is the sacred ground and the sacred landscape and the right of people to honor their dead. So it makes it very easy to identify. And then, of course, there's conflict and drama within that. But we also, rather than focus on the conflict, because that is endless, we've right. made it the challenge to face the conflict but with um, enlarging the community that surrounds it and using art and performance and poetry yes. and song yes. and this film. And that's just so healing. Yeah. Wonderful. And the history, head of the history department at East Texas Baptist is one of the people who comes out and brings his students. You know, it's such a great opportunity. And so that's, that will be the next step after the film is out to create a whole national pilot project in education. Oh, that's oh, oh, bless you, bless. I don't want to say too much about it because we can't right. do it at the yeah. same time we're completing yeah. a film. Right. But right. that's why the film has to get finished because yeah. look what's happening in our society, and so much is happening because not that people are evil or ill will, mm -hmm. though of course that's there too. But so much of what happens is we we're ignorant, we don't know, it's just we've never learned, yeah. lack of education. Yes. 
And listen, I had a good education. This is not something that the dominant culture has wanted particularly right. to, it's now being much more situated in the mainstream. Well, and we've it's had about some time. fantastic historians it's, it's bring time. out amazing new books and, and history. But one book in particular that I was really struck by, and I finally read this last year, is authored by James Cone, who's considered the father of black theology mm -hmm. in this country. He's mm -hmm. a professor at Union Theological Seminary in New York. Cone wrote this extraordinary book called The Cross and the Lynching Tree. Mm. Mm. So for people who consider themselves Christian in this society, it's especially important to examine, you know, Christ was a lynch, lynching victim. Yeah. So, and I think it's a, a real gift that you would invite me to come tonight when we're so close to Christmas, which is really all about love. And it's all Amen. about this tiny little light of innocence that has no place. You know, there was no place at the end. You know, they end up with the animals mm -hmm. in the straw, in a stable, because there's no place for mm -hmm. innocence and love. Mm -hmm. And so much of that is still true today. And yet, it's born. And it's born in each and every one of us. Absolutely. Whether you, Absolutely. Whether you identify as a Christian or whatever, yeah. it's... It's a deeply human story, and it's told in many cultures and many different religions in different ways. Um, and it's what makes us human and, and keeps us alive. And, and unless and, uh, coming back to love, and we need that more than anything right now in our whole global culture, is coming back to love. And and that's why I do my show too, in showing all the different levels of of the healing and unconditional love and all the wealth that are in all of th those departments in our lives. And we all need to resurrect love. Absolutely. And by that, and it's, you know, continue to have the ability to access love, to clean it up, to maintain it, to also realize that we need to be educated in the ways of love. Absolutely. And the history of love. Mm -hmm. And I mean love on all different levels. Yeah. Yes. Love Cemetery yes. is a little bit like an ice core out of Antarctica. It gives you centuries. Uh -huh. Our whole history uh -huh. is Interesting there. Interesting looking at it like that. Yes, yeah. I, I almost see it as a geological phenomenon because it's emblematic. It, it, it's a metaphor. It's a living mm -hmm. entity in which the history of this country is encapsulated and still clearly visible and still contending with the legacy mm. of people having been enslaved. This yeah. history that we we don't, I think we haven't faced because we haven't known how. Well, there's probably a lot of shame that's in there too, you know, from a lot of the deep Southern people. I mean, I, I know that my family came into South Carolina and I don't even know all the history, the deep history around that, um, even though that I have ancestors that were part of the Constitution and the forefathers. Um, and that's something I haven't looked at, and it's time to look at it to see, you know, what, what uh, can be uncovered and, um, you know, to help, to help those that have been enslaved. Well, my experience is that they've helped me. It's not like I can help them. Yeah. They have they've been. They've already been through that, that transformation, actually. You know, I mean, I don't know. I We're don't all know, human, you know. and nobody's it's, perfect. No, no. But it's what I've discovered is that this is for me, for my own soul, because by getting to tell the truth, my family didn't hold slaves. They came in 1903 to raise peaches. Mm -hmm. However, in learning the history, it wasn't a whole lot different. Mm -hmm. Conditions for people you know, in farming areas were horrible. Oh, I'm sure. And yeah, it was hard life. Hard life, yeah. Not just a hard life, but cruel. I mean, there were there were institutions, there was debt peonage that, that sprung up afterwards in ways that white people kept African Americans mm. indebted, uneducated. You know, it was still mm. against the law to teach people how to read. Mm. So also these historically black colleges like Wiley, founded in 1873 mm -hmm. by the Freedmen's Bureau to 
precisely teach people to read in the way it's just such an inspiring history to read because everything was set against them to defeat them and yet they still managed to become literate to own newspapers to publish to edit right. to yeah. run for office and yeah. Yeah. and then and what they've been doing and now we have president obama so that is a huge step and our time has come to an end and I know we could continue this conversation for much, much longer. And I appreciate you sharing all this because this really does touch a deep co chord. And, you know, to, uh, to make our viewers, or I should say, allow our viewers to hear this and educate them on this, it's extremely important. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to oh, talk about resurrecting it's our love. Our pleasure. Because if whomever might want to participate, I we can't can. wait to see that documentary, we resurrecting are. love. Yes. And people need to read this book too, because that will bring it back home and a reminder to resurrect the love. Period. Yes. So many people haven't known what to do. They realize that something's wrong after Ferguson and Staten Island and yeah, all what, the killings. What can people do? That's people, a good one of the things people could do is support us completing this film. Oh, okay. This yeah. is part yeah. of what I meant about the Purga Dante's Purgatorio. Me being white, having to ask other white people all these years for money mm. to make a documentary about race oh, has been challenge. quite challenging because many people if they're affluent enough to make donations sometimes, they're so removed that they haven't really, they yeah, don't they ha haven't had an idea. Right. So it hasn't been a common understanding oh, sure. how alive and well racism is and what a chokehold racism has had. I've used that unfortunate term for many years on our country. And now it's visible, tragically visible. Oh. So what people could, one of the things people can do, there are many things people can do in their own communities, but they could also make a tax-deductible donation right. okay. to the San Francisco Film Society yes. for resurrecting love. Okay. So we can finish, we could finish in three months if we had the funds to have the editors right. back in I'm, the editing I'm suite and complete glad it. glad that you said that because Thank you. that's extremely important. And it's very simple, $5, 5000 50000 We, I right. have another at least right. 85000 to raise right now. Okay. So well, whatever anyone can do, it's, large or it's, small. It's on its way. Gratefully received. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll leave you with this. Self-discipline is a form of freedom. Freedom from laziness and lethargy. Freedom from the expectations and demands of others. Freedom from weakness and fear and doubt. H.A. Dorfman, American Mental Skills Coach. Thank you, Marin TV, for facilitating our show, and especially my crew, Eric, Ginger, and Jack. Please support and become a member of Marin TV. Bye for now. Until next time. <laughs>